Our political and cultural systems are polarized by the fragmentation of our world, of sin. Yet, God's ability to sustain us has never been broken. What is God's narrative, God's story through all of this? And how do we interpret the world around us through the lens of who God has been, who He is, and who He will be? Here is Pastor Kevin with our sermon series, Unbroken. Well, good morning once again. It's wonderful to have you here and being a part of this worship service. And those of you that have joined us online, if you would, turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Romans. And we're back in Romans chapter 8 this morning. I want to give just a brief, uh, just brief uh, addendum uh, to the announcements and appreciate what Pastor Nathan had to share. Several people have asked, they've said, you know, our business meeting, our annual business meeting is normally a little earlier in the summer. And uh, the, the main reason why we had to choose to to have the annual business meeting a little bit later this year is because of COVID. And we had uh, audits, financial audits uh, that we completed. And because of COVID, that slowed us down a little bit. And so uh, we just took the time uh, to make those plans. And so we want to encourage you to join us either online on August 30th. Uh, we have some exciting things to share in our annual business meeting. But just to, so you know, because of the uniqueness of this year, our annual business meeting will be in person and online. Uh, it's, we've never done that way before, but uh, as, uh, as even Pastor Nathan said, this is a different year, isn't it? And so uh, we're, we're looking forward to uh, this unique way of doing it, and you can keep it in prayer. And again, we look forward to sharing uh, some wonderful news with you. August, uh, excuse me, uh, August 30th, that is. Look with me in Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 is where we'll be continuing on this, in this study that we've been looking at uh, Paul teaching how to live life victoriously, living life with strength, spiritual strength. I've entitled the message this morning, How to See Hardships Differently. None of us really like hardships, do we? No, uh, none of us uh, would we. None of us like the idea of suffering or difficulty. And the word suffering can be interpreted or translated in different ways. You can think of it as suffering or hardships or difficulty. And I want us to look at this passage because. Paul gives us a description on how to look at hardships in a different lens, a different set of lenses. In fact, when you look at the gospel writers and you look at the way that um, even other gospel writers uh, interpret, even Peter himself talks about hardships and James, how James in, in his first chapter uh, talks about hardships. It gives us a different way of looking at even what we're going through in this particular period of time. And it teaches us how to li live life victorious as we understand how to see hardships in a different way. So let's look there at uh, James, or excuse me, at Romans chapter 8, verse 18. Verse 18, Paul says it this way. He says, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. That one verse has, uh, ha teaches us so much and helps us redefine our understanding of how we look at suffering and how we look at difficulties and hardships. And I, and I believe and pray that in our time together this morning, that as we look at this passage, it will help give uh, just an encouragement. It will help you see this time differently. It will help you look past this time and look into the future of what God is going to do through this particular time. Years ago, when the movie The Hiding Place came out, there was a particular scene uh, that the, uh, the writers uh, set in, in the concentration camp in Germany. The scene in The, the Hiding Place uh, depicts uh, Corrie Tin Boone and her sister Betsy uh, uh, as they were leading uh, in, in a concentration camp, leading a Bible study. 10,000, over 10,000 women were, um, were, uh, were in this camp and the conditions were horrible. In the movie, they gathered together with a group of 
women in their barricaded uh, hallway in the bed bedroom, and in the midst of these these beds, this corridor with cold and and hunger and lice ridden beds, Betsy and her sister led a Bible study. They bet led a class, a Bible class, and and during this time, one of the other woman women listening them called out from uh, uh, one of the upper bunks and began to mock them for worshiping God. And they, they, um, they, they, they briefly stopped, and, and the Bible study came to an, an abrupt, quiet um, halt. And she said to them, she says, if, if, God were, if God was such a good God, why does he allow this kind of suffering? And dramatically in her tears, this woman at the top bunk leaned her hands over and unwrapped her ravished, bleeding fingers, and they were broken, and she displayed for Corey Tin Boone her broken fingers and said, I was first a violinist, and now I'm here. What does this mean for me? Corey Tin Boone stepped aside from her sister, and she answered this. She says, we can't answer that question. All we know is that our God came to this earth and he became one of us and he suffered with us and, and was crucified and died and that he did it for love. And how we interpret this and how we look at hardships and how we understand suffering, Paul gives this, this, this interesting uh, description of how we look at hardships. And, and notice with me in, this, in, in verse 18 of chapter 8, where Paul begins this discussion as he's talking about victorious living, Christian living, as he's talking about walking in the life in the spirit, how he's talking about the love of God. It, it starts with, with there is no, no condemnation and then it, it ends with there is no separation from God. And here in the middle, Paul then would take a few moments to, to jot down and write these words about how to look at hardships in the lens of Jesus Christ and how, how to look at it in the leading of the Holy Spirit. And the first word that we see there that captures our attentions is this word, consider. Consider. Paul says, I consider. Now, this means that Paul is talking about what we think or how he thinks. He says, I consider that our present suffering are not worth comparing. Our present suffering is not worth comparing. You see, something about difficulties or hardship is they, they, sip, they typically are painful. Hardship and suffering is painful and pain, pain or hardships typically leave us looking inward and reflecting on exactly what the cause may be or what the difficulty may be or why this is happening to us. And it takes our attention off of anything else and, and it leaves us with uh, and asking the questions, what's the cause and what's the effect and what's going to happen? And all of these things become the reflection and the, the ruminations of our mind and we become so focused on that. Yet Paul says this, he says, I want you to consider it differently. Look at hardships in a different set of lenses. So what is it that Paul is trying to tell us? He says, he says, consider that this present suffering, he noticed this, and this is the first thought I want to share with you this morning, is that hardships have the opportunity, hardships can change our thoughts from comparison to what God wants us to consider. Hardships change our, our, they change our, our thoughts from our comparison because, because when, we, when we deal with suffering, we deal with hardships and we deal with pain, it's easy to begin to compare and to measure the current situation or the current hardships. In fact, I've heard it said over and over again, somebody said, in my entire life, I've never experienced this type of thing that we've, we've experienced before. That's a comparison statement, isn't it? We're comparing it to another or non-existent moment in our life. 
You see how we do that? You see how that captures our attention? We naturally fall into this comparison mode. And, and, and yet Paul says this. He says, I consider that this present suffering cannot be compared to, to what? He's saying cannot be compared with the glory that God will be revealed in us. He's talking about a different time frame. He's talking about a different season, a different period, a different moment. And if there was any way that we could shift our attention off of this moment, think just for a moment that there is a different moment ahead. There's a different time ahead. In fact, in fact, in, in all throughout Scripture, when we look at the Bible, hardships are typically looked at and described as in, in a different way. Because hardships in God's economy are looked as a way to bring about God's results. You see, if God wants to bring out his results, he can use hardships just as he can use good times. He can, he can use the, the wonderful moments, the moments we celebrate, and he can use the hardships. And if I look at my hardships, if I look at my difficulties, and I realize that's, that's changing my thoughts, and it can change, and, and I'm invited to consider, to look at them in a different way. When I think about uh, learning a language, most of you know that I, that I grew up speaking French. I grew up in Africa speaking French, and the first, uh, not only in our home, but I, I, uh, we, had a, um, we had somebody that took care of my, my sister and I in Africa. Um, this, is my, this is my, I walked up um, the hill both ways to school in the snow story. <laughs> Pastor Garrett sh shaking his head. When we lived in Africa, we didn't have an air conditioning unit. We didn't have certain things. Um, we, uh, we lived uh, two hours over a mountain range from uh, Dukomi, Dahomey and lived quite a ways from uh, the doctor's office and all those other things. I could go on and on about that. But I remember learning language because I remember learning at the age of two, we had people around us and I started learning French simultaneously when I learned English. And so French is very much a part of my, I could, sometimes I sit and I listen to French news or French, French uh, uh, um, uh, commentators or French, just, to, just sometimes to get a different look, just to get a different thought. And when I was 21, 22, and I graduated from Bible college and I went over to do a two-year missions assignment, I was put back in a, a complete French environment and I was asked to teach in French. And I remember I hadn't, been in, I hadn't spoken French for about seven or eight years to that length of time. I started speaking French and I get headaches. I, I, would, I would start speaking French, and I'd be in French for two weeks or three weeks at a time. And then after about the, two or third, the third week back into the language, it all of a sudden just started flowing a lot easier. And, I, and, and here's the thing about hardships. Hardships are like a different type of God's language. God can use a hardship like a different language to communicate a different depth and meaning of who he is. And though in the moment it may seem very difficult, and though in the moment it seems hard, difficult, it's actually, Paul says this, he says, consider that this present time can be used by God to show something different about his glory. And not only is this the present time, but notice this, he says that the present suffering or the present time tells us that there's a glory to be revealed that cannot compare. That means that what's ahead of us looks much better than what we're going through right now. What's ahead of us is, is so much more precious, more, more, more dynamic, more beautiful than what we're going through right now. And Paul says this, consider it, but don't compare. Don't compare this moment. Don't look at this moment. Don't compare this moment to anything else, but consider what God has in store ahead for you and I. And if that doesn't start shifting your mind and shifting your thoughts, then you and I need to have coffee this week. Because here's what Paul is trying to say. He says, he says it's not worth comparing. Stop the comparison game. 
You know, I've had conversations this week about masks and, and different things. And, and, and the complexity of our season, it breaks down in, 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 in the dealing with the, with the virus, the pandemic, the perceptions, the politics. And what if we just blow all of those things to the side and say, God, what is it that you want me to consider right now? What is it that, how do you want me to consider what you want to do? Because the, it, the, the hardships give us the ability to change our thoughts from our comparisons to what God wants us to do. You see, the, when we read scripture and we look at scripture in its entirety, people knew something about hardships. They knew hardships were something about that God was going to bring about a result. Paul knew that the hardships were bringing a result into their lives. So the question is, what's the result of this season? What are the results of this season? Some of you haven't had the opportunity to go back into the gym. I, I know I was working out earlier in the year, and now the gym's closed down, and uh, at least I'm not back in the gym and not able to work out as much as I do. But I, I, do, I am walking around my neighborhood a lot more. And I realized that that just like when, when, when I started working out in the beginning of the year and I started uh, lifting weights, it was painful. But then after about two or three months, it wasn't as painful anymore. I checked my phone just today, this morning, because I thought about it. I, I was wondering how, how much I was walking. And I didn't realize I'm, I'm walking about five miles a day and not realizing that it's just now natural. Because change changes us. Hardships change us. And, and, and Paul says it this way. He says, consider the present suffering. Consider this present moment and don't compare it to the revelation of God's glory of what he's going to do. We even see this in John chapter 9 in the first, th th uh, first couple of verses where we read that, that, that Jesus himself uh, heals a blind man. John chapter 9, verse 1, the disciples come to Jesus and they said, they said, Jesus, what did this man do? What did his parents do that, that, that would cause him to be born blind? What, what were the results? What were the, what, what's the comparison? Why did he have to live his life during this suffering and during this difficulty? And Jesus gives his disciples and gives those around him a very interesting concept about suffering and hardships because he says this, this happened not because of what he did, not because of something that he caused or something his parents did wrong, but this this happened so that God's glory could be revealed through him. And then Jesus puts a little mud on his eyes and says, go wash in the pool of Siloam. And the man's healed and God's glorified. And the religious leaders are angry. They're upset. They're really upset with the blind man. They're upset with his parents. And then they're upset with Jesus. And then there's more suffering to come. There's more hardship. And Jesus says it this way. This didn't happen. This hardship did not happen to this man because he did anything wrong, but because God wanted to use to glorify. Now, I know that this may not be like the most heartwarming message you're feeling, but I'm hoping that you see through this that, that hardships God can use to help us understand him in so much of a different way. Hardships, number two, is this. Hardships refuel our hope in what the, what the Lord has planned. Hardships refuel our hope. You may not necessarily see it that way, but look at the way that Paul describes it. Verse 19, for he says, the cre For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be, to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by, but by the, the, the will of the one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from the bondage to, uh, to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. What he's saying is this. 
He's saying that the hardship and the frustration actually have a pers- purpose and it's bringing about something that is, that is hopeful and that is, that is uh, stronger, that's different because of the hardship. It, it refuels their hope. Can I tell you this? As, as, as I come through this season, as we come through this season, I look with excitement, with anticipation, with the way that God's helping us understand how to be different as a church. And as we, as we look into the future, how God wants to use us, we will be more refined, better prepared, more refueled. And and when we come and we look into the next season, we say, God, how are you preparing us? How are you refining us? How are you doing all of these things? And because of it, it creates a hope and an excitement and 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 a looking forward to what God is doing. And that's what Paul says. He says, consider and look and recognize that the, that he is that he's working he's 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 changing and he says in hope that the creation itself will be will be brought into the freedom and the glory he recognizes that it refuels our hope i love this poem this poem that has been that's called the weaver it says it this way it says my life is but a weaving between my lord and me i cannot choose the colors of the of the work the working the uh, work of steadily oftentimes we we weave sorrow and i i in foolish pride forget he sees the upper and the underside the dark threads are as needful in the weaving we, weaver's uh, skillful hand as the threads of gold and silver in the pattern he has planned not till the loom is silent and the shuttle ceases to fly shall god unroll the canvas and explain the reason why you see paul says it this way he says when we measure our hardships we look at it and we notice that in hopeful expectation he's going to bring about the freedom and the hope that he wants to bring as his children as god's children not only that that hardship leads us to prayer while the, the while the spirit of god is working look with me in verse 22 he says um we who that uh, we know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit groan inwardly as we um, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption for, to sonship. Can I tell you that this present time is not our end goal? Our, this present time is not our end goal. And, and, and Paul says it very clearly. He says that, that the hardships have the ability to lead us into prayer where we pray and we groan with God's presence and we groan and we pray. To, and this time is, 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 a, is a moment where God invites us into praying together and seeking God's face and, and saying, God, I, 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 it's hard, it's difficult. And, and, I, and, I, and we pray together and we seek God's face and and in doing so Paul says that that the Holy Spirit himself is working in us to change us and transform us and the Holy Spirit groans with us he prays with us and and at moments in our groaning we recognize how close God is and we discover that this this the beauty of his closeness in moments of hardships you know, they say this, they, they've said that, and, and I've, sh- I've shared this in, in, in many times in marriage counseling or even in, um, and it, it, Pastor Nathan probably will write this down and he could, he'll, 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 he's shared this before, I know this. When you're in marriage counseling or new couples, when they first get married, one of the things that draws them closer together is experiencing either something new that they've never done before or a hardship together this, this last this last week uh, Tarina and I celebrated our anniversary Thursday we celebrated our anniversary um, after after being here at Northland Cathedral I don't really share how many years we've been married because many of you have been married sometimes two or three times the amount of years that we've been married but I'll share it anyway we've been married for 16 years 
And, <laughs> and we took some time together to celebrate our anniversary this last week. And, and, um, but as many of you who have been married many more years than we have, you know that your relationship with one another becomes much deeper because you've walked through seasons of hardship together. You, you know one another more intimately because you've walked through. And there are things that Tarina and I, in our 16 years of marriage, losing family members, going through difficulties, I, I know and love her more and have more depth and knowledge, and, and, and we share those experiences together, and it makes us more uniquely connected together. And, and hardships have that potential if we'll allow them to be used in that manner. And Paul is exactly saying that way, same way in our relationship with Christ. He says, consider, think about it. Look at the hardship differently and look with expectation what God wants to bring through it and what results he wants to bring out on the other side. And though it may be hard right now, this present time is only a moment and on the other side, there is a hopeful rejoicing, a more powerful revelation of what God wants to reveal in you, in me, in us. And if we look at it that way, then it leads us to a stronger time of prayer while the Holy Spirit is working, is groaning, and all of these things are happening in us. Amen. Last thing that Paul says here in this passage, he says, hardship refines us as God's people toward his will. Toward his will. We have a, we have a dog at home who uh, I, I've mentioned many times our dog is is advanced in years, still stubborn as all get out. <laughs> stubborn dog. She's very small, but she's super strong. She's stocky. And she uh, still, when I try to take her for a walk, she's still stubborn. I try to lead her. She wants to go the other way. She just gets more stubborn. And I still take her out. We still go for a walk. But, but, but I also know that, that, I'm, that I have to lead her. I have to lead her. I have to move her in a different direction. And sometimes we're so stubborn and we see suffering and pain in a different way when God's really trying to lead us in a certain will, in a way. Look with me in this passage at the way that Paul says it, and he says it best. In verse 26, he says, In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. The Spirit helps us in our weakness. It's interesting that we, Paul notices that all of us are weak, and it's in our weaknesses that, that hardships actually become an applicable way of, of moving us in, in the direction that he has. And he says, we do not know what we ought to pray for. There, that's very true. Sometimes we don't even know. There's times where we don't even have the words to say, or we don't even have, know exactly how to pray. But he says, the Spirit himself intercedes for us through the wordless groanings. And then verse 27, he says, and he searches our hearts knowing the minds of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. That means the Spirit of God has a will that he wants to move us in that direction and, his, and hardships are a, a way that God refines his people and refines us and he moves us in that direction. And those that, are, that have joined us the, online and those that have been uh, been joining us in service online, who knew that, that, that at the beginning of the year we would launch an online ministry and we'd be, we'd be lighting up the, the, the worship center and doing all of these things that we never expected to do, but it, but it became a part of God's will and a part of God's direction for our church and it's through the groaning, it's through the hardships, it's through those moments that God changes us and His Spirit 
transforms us. And though it may may seem like momentary suffering and momentary hardships, it actually is producing in us the very thing that God wants to produce in us, and that is men, um, men and women who are stable, men and women who are deep, men and women who are who are who are rooted and and experiencing the the presence and the life of the Holy Spirit on a day by day basis. And this is what Paul is describing in this in this very passage as he as he mentions this. And it's in this hardship that he changes us. I love the way that, that, the, that the president of the navigators, the former president of the navigators said it this way. He said, Lauren Sani said it this way. He, he would say it on a frequent basis. He says, if you are suffering without succeeding, then someone will succeed after you. If you're suffering without succeeding, then someone will succeed after you. If you are succeeding without suffering, then someone suffered before you. He said, somebody, if, you, if you're succeeding without suffering, then somebody, someone suffered before you. You see, it's only momentary. Everything is momentary. And, and here's the beauty of this very truth that God has given us through this passage is this. Jesus Christ already suffered everything for you and I. There is no one greater that has already gone before us. And because he suffered, we walk in success. We walk with victory. That means that this momentary hardship, this momentary difficult is only a moment. And we can look at it and we consider it. We can consider it in a different way, in a different light and say, God, I'm going to look at this hardship in a different way. I'm going to look at this way. You know, this last, this last season as we've gone and done ministry online, we've had five or six people that I know of that have responded to, to our online campus, our online ministry that have given their heart to Christ. Not people here in Kansas City. Pastor Garrett, a week and a half ago, baptized five young people on a Wednesday night, making commitments to Christ. <laughs> last week, Last week, in our last service, last week, we had a new family that came to our church. They had been visiting our church. They had been coming and going. They saw the video of the youth being baptized online a week and a half ago. And then then they came and they stepped forward and said, you know what, Uh, my son and my daughter want to be baptized here at Northland Cathedral. And here's the thing. If we look at these things differently, then we gain God's perspective and we move in the will and the plan that God has for you and I. Amen? Amen. Would you stand with me this morning? Those of you that have joined us online and those of you here in person... We just want to pray together that God would help us to redefine our hardships and help us discover the results that God wants to bring about. As I close in prayer with you uh, and, and each one of us, there's no doubt that there are so many people suffering or experiencing hardships in different ways so many different ways it's hard to count loss of job people who have been at home and dealing with different facets of this and in all of that my prayer is this is that God will use you and I to show the love of Christ to them and help them understand that God's bringing about some results in us. Would you just close in prayer with me? Heavenly Father, we want to thank you, Lord, for your word. We want to thank you for for a message that 
Lord, permeates the way that we look at our hardships. Help us, Lord. We ask you that you would help us when we don't have the words to say and we groan inwardly. We ask for your spirit to come alongside of us and to empower us, to show us, Lord, what it is, that, the results that you're bringing about. We thank you for every hardship and we celebrate what you're bringing about. We thank you and praise you. Amen. Amen. Thank you for taking time to pray together. Would you just close as we, as Pastor Ron leads us in his closing song? with us that uh, at the back you can drop off your uh, card there's a gift for you or at the connection center continue this week praising God for the struggles that build us amen God bless you